Support for this podcast comes from Goodman. Goodman is a brand of Daikin Comfort Technologies Incorporated, the number one HVAC manufacturer worldwide with one of the world's largest state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities located near Houston, Texas. Since 1982, Goodman has focused on offering the best values for HVAC systems and supplies, producing energy-efficient, high-quality HVAC equipment that's easy to sell, install, and maintain. Goodman's continuous efforts have helped contribute to the success of many HVAC contractors like you. Goodman produces a complete line of residential ducted split systems and packaged units. The company's product line is supported by numerous technology enhancements, many exclusive to the Goodman brand. One example of exclusivity is the Google Nest Thermostat E+, that brings together the helpfulness of Google with the year-round comfort of Goodman. Goodman also offers comfort bridge technology that allows Goodman systems to be connected to any 24-volt thermostat, and the Cool Cloud app allows contractors to connect, configure, and diagnose wirelessly. It's no wonder millions of homeowners say, Thank goodness for Goodman. Look for and be sure to follow Goodman on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome to Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath, formerly Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor are available on YouTube, as well as your podcast player choice. And for more information on how CertainPath can put your contracting company on a certain path to success, visit our website, www.mycertainpath.com. I'm excited to bring to you an interview with Amanda Henritzi, a customer care manager for Air Repair Pros in Frisco, Texas. Far too often, and I'm definitely guilty of it, in the home services contracting world, we solely focus on technicians and salespeople, people who produce the big glitzy sales numbers. Without an exceptional call center, those individuals cannot be successful. Great CCRs and dispatchers absolutely make an impact on average tickets and closing percentage. Sophisticated companies that properly track those numbers can tell you that is a fact. Amanda Henritzi is a customer care manager, but she's also the lead CCR and dispatcher for Air Repair Pros. She does it all and she does it all exceptionally well. In 2022, she had an exceptional year. Amanda converted 98.47% of her calls to appointments, and that's with 4,300 calls she took. And she only had a cancellation rate of around 9%. Amanda and the Air Repair Pro team also sold an astounding 1,600 new club memberships in 2022. So great, great numbers. In this interview, Amanda will share how she's become so good in this industry in just two years how she's learned and mastered dispatching, what kind of questions she asks when booking the call, how she presents, plants a seed, and often sells the club over the phone, how she handles the phone when they're busy and when they're slow, and how she handles every objection imaginable. This is going to be a power-packed 60 minutes. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Amanda Henritzi, a customer care manager and superstar for Air Repair Pros in Frisco, Texas. I hope you enjoy our conversation and take away a nugget or two. Amanda, thank you so much for taking some time to sit with me today. Really appreciate it. Uh, for those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you at uh, Expo or a training, could you share with everyone your name, your company name, and where you're located? Yes, my name is Amanda Henritzi. I'm the customer care manager at Air Repair Pros, and we are located in Frisco, Texas. Very nice, very nice. And you're here today for a very good reason. You had an excellent year last year, if I understand. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Can I share with everyone some of some of your numbers? Like, for example, what was your your booking percentage? Uh, yeah, so my booking percentage was ninety eight point four seven percent. I booked a total of four thousand two hundred and forty seven jobs out of forty three hundred phone calls. So, yeah, uh, I had a really great year. Um, my average inbound call time was two minutes and twelve seconds, and uh, my department overall had a cancellation rate of nine point four percent. So, yeah. great. And now, that how many clubs did you sell? Uh, well, last year we uh, converted almost 1,600 new members. So, whoa, yeah, <laughs> so two of you. Uh huh. Wow. Uh, now, how many? How many of those were were from you guys, the call center versus in the field? Uh, I would say we book. Uh, we convert probably about 30 percent of our members over the phone before we come out there. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's busy. Oh yeah, <laughs> all of it is Never a dull moment. Well, we're we're looking forward to digging in into what you do every day in, in the call center there. But uh, for doing so, people know I like to learn. 
uh, personal stories. I think that, that tells a lot about people. So uh, let's let's dig into yours. How did uh, how did you get into this industry? How did I get here? Okay, yeah, um, I actually have a really super interesting background. Um, I am not from HVAC at all. Um, I actually spent a decade of my life in bridal retail. Yeah, so um, very customer service oriented and interpersonal sales. Um, and I dug into HVAC off of a leap of faith. I just wanted something totally different from anything I'd ever done before. Right, well, that's the intense <laughs> Yeah, I, for my being married and knowing how uh, anxious everyone is, that's, that's yeah. a tough space. Oh yeah, it's a tough space, but the cool thing is, is that there's actually a lot that transfers over uh, from bridal retail into HVAC, because uh, you're dealing with, you know, heavy investments yeah. um, and, and emotional investing, creating that experience, that customer experience, because I always told my stylists in the past, if they didn't buy from you, it's because they didn't like you. Yeah. So uh, creating that customer experience is something that I feel sets us apart as a company, uh, especially compared to our other competitors in our area. Um, and you can tell from the moment that we answer the phones, like that that is what we're all about. And that's yeah. what drives our business for sure. Interesting. So how did you swerve into HVAC? <laughs> I, like I said, it was just a leap of faith. I just, uh, you know, saw the um, out, Indeed application and I was like, okay, like the, the culture that, they were really talking about in the application was what really drove me home uh, because I was really looking for something that would include me as a work family. Uh, that's something super important to me is the work culture because arguably, you know, uh, like so many times have been said here over Expo, um, you know, you can find a job that pays you anywhere, but it, it's the people that make you stay and linger around for a long time. So. And it's, 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 it's more fruit. You enjoy where you're at. Um, great experience. I love what I do now. If you would have told me <laughs> I was going to love selling HVAC equipment and like booking service calls and like managing a team of men, because I came from managing women. Right. Um, <laughs> I would have thought you were joking. Yeah. Um, but I love what I do and I love my team and our, our air repair family. It's everything to me. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> So what was your onboarding experience? So yeah, obviously no trade background. So this is all new. So what did you do to, to get up to date? Um, so our, the onboarding process was a PowerPoint presentation at first. Um, and I mean, the PowerPoint covered a wide variety of things. I mean, specifically we had a whole chunk of my training that was dedicated to learning about general HVAC, how it works, what things are called, um, and, uh, kind of the steps of a perfect service call, um, the different technicians, their backgrounds, um, their skill sets, um, what they're best at, uh, the geography. Cause I also moved here from, a, I moved to Frisco from a totally different location. So I had to learn the geography too, sure. which was interesting. Um, and, um, it also included, you know, things about our memberships our financing options. Um, and just, there was so much that it covered. I like kind of had to hit the ground running because, yeah. um, that that was something totally new territory for me. Some of it was, you know, I, I had some recall from my past work experience with like financing and those kinds of things, but obviously I had to learn the new terms and like this level of investment is obviously much more significant than wedding dresses. I mean, depending on the wedding dress option, sure. but, <laughs> but you know, um, learn, I will say that my team made sure that I was very equipped in understanding yeah. HVAC because uh, that that I cannot bring into the ground enough that you need to be teaching your customer service team about HVAC equipment okay. and how things work so you can actually talk to the customer from a, like an educated perspective. So was that all just that was all through PowerPoint going through the terminology mm -hmm. and stuff like that? Yeah and then uh, she uh, we also did a bunch of YouTube videos and uh, the work culture that we have there, my technicians are very open and I was always curious, like especially with our warehouse team, our install team and our technicians to really get a, get an understanding of like what the pieces are, why they function that way, why we're performing these repairs together, how long things take. Yeah. Um, so I, I always made sure to keep an open dialogue with them and I still do to this day because I... I there's always more things that you learn and new services that you add and those kinds of things. Do you sit 
with each department. They kind of talk to the department head and go to the warehouse and go, oh, yeah. Touch and feel this, all the different, you know, the different materials and such. Yeah. So my warehouse manager, uh, Kevin, shout out Kevin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, anytime that he would come back to the office with a new part, I was like, what is that? Yeah. What is that? What does it do? What is it called? I want to know what that thing is because yeah. I want to match it on invoices. I was always super curious about that because I wanted to really see like, what what things cost and why they're important and how they function in the actual mechanics of HVAC. Yes. <laughs> no, that's that's great. That's great. Your part of your onboarding was also learning the different technicians and their strong suits. Is that absolutely? Yeah. Yep. Really. So they just broke out. Okay, this is X Y. Who this is X, and he's good at this, and here's mm -hmm. why. And he's good at that. Absolutely. And how how long they've been in the field? Um, what all they actually specialize in? Because obviously there are certain technicians that are like skilled in mini splits or some that are skilled in airflow or some that are really proficient with water leak situations, some that are more sales driven and more sales focused. Um, so uh, learning that has absolutely helped us continue to dispatch for profits, which is something that we've done since I started. Right, right, right. So how long did this onboarding last? So uh, that's interesting. We have to fall right at the same time because that was, there was a need Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There was, there was a need to fill. It was constantly <laughs> interrupted. So, but it was kind of cool because, uh, I'm a, I, I consider myself a very quick learner. So thankfully, like I was the intro to it. So I, you know, it was just me and my, Best. my, yeah, I was a test subject <laughs> precisely. Um, so I, I, I was using every opportunity as kind of a learn as I go. And even if I didn't understand it, I yeah. would use it as a way to be the building blocks to learn from it. Um, and be able to ask questions on that whenever, and then things would just light bulb in my head, like, oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think that the way that I was trained was crucial because like the actual onboarding process itself with the PowerPoint, the videos, you know, the learning, the actual curriculum and the material to do my job well, um, that took about a week and a half to two weeks. And then I did a lot of shadowing, like a lot of shadowing. Um, so I was shadowing my, at the time, my operations manager, um, and she uh, was the primary CCR and dispatcher, all-inclusive, all-in-one. Yep, small company. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, so I was shadowing her for about two and a half, three weeks, okay. uh, just to get a really good grasp on the types of calls that would come in and, you know, the different types of responses that she was expecting. So that way I could kind of mimic that sure. as I went, because obviously I came from nothing. I yeah. had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> sure. and, uh, did you do a lot of, or did you do any ride alongs or see what the install team did, or was it mostly all the I wish that I could do ride alongs. Um, I hope that that's something that we get to do in the future. Unfortunately, that is not. I, <laughs> they needed me in the office and I like being there, so sure. that's okay. Um, but I, um, I always, like, I always did things on my own too, like even outside of the air repair walls. Yeah. Um, I always went onto YouTube, onto the hub and I went and watched all the videos because I want to, I want to know what my technicians were experiencing so I can set them up for success. And I wanted to know, you know, what we expected them because obviously as a dispatcher, I'm mm -hmm also overseeing their day-to-day -day, and I need to know how long things are going to take so I can set those expectations with our customers. Right, right, right. How, how long did it take for you to earn the right to, to start dispatching and hidden placing technicians with calls? Because that's a that's an art. That is an art, yeah. yes, and it is a very skillful art. Yeah. Um, it took me about eight months before I felt confident yeah. enough to be able to do that. Yeah, what everyone needs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is that I'm really good with names, um, but I I did want to make sure that I was doing it in an artful, masterful way. I wanted it to be very thoughtful and thought through because obviously like matching up skill sets and geography and, and just the whole overall dynamic of it, you know, and I, I wanted to really get to know my technicians because that's something that from my background at David's, I had the privilege of meeting all of our brides. So I wanted to make sure that you make the right match. It's more than just geography and skill set. It's also about meshing personalities, especially during shoulder season, because that makes all the difference in the world. There are some customers that call in that they're more like 
engineer type based like they they are DIYers and they have all these they they have a very specific vision of how things are supposed to go or you know you have our your customers that have a lot of questions they are first time homeowners they don't know anything they're this is a whole new learning process for them they didn't even know about HVAC maintenance you know what I'm saying so like making sure to match the right personalities is crucial during the slower times when yeah. the phones aren't just constantly ringing off the hook yeah how much uh how much personality matching is done? I know there's, and we'll get into priority scheduling yeah. and that stuff. But is there is there a lot of that too in terms of so and so as a personality? I think will mesh well with that. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, and it's interesting because you have to really know your technicians to be able to do that well. Right. And you also have to be really good at reading your customers too, sure. especially over the phone because you're not having a face to face interaction. So, so there's no body language or anything like that. Um, I just kind of go off of, you know, how how many questions they're asking, are they what what they're valuing? Because certain technicians have stronger sets of portraying those values. Yeah. So, you know, you have people that lead with like a more sales approach, or you have people that are leading with more of like a repair approach. So those kinds of things I take into consideration for sure. You mentioned learning your technicians and, and again it took you eight months, which is still fast. So why not get this bad? <laughs> What, what what else did you do to, to better learn your, your technician's strong suits and the personalities of what jobs are better at than others? How, what else did you do? Yeah, um, so we actually have a little get to know you form that we have them fill out as part of their onboarding. So that way we get to learn a little bit more about their personalities. Um, we use PulseM, so they get every customer gets a little biography that you know I, I utilize to help me with that. Um, and just in general, um, our warehouse and our offices are tied together so i make sure to check in with the guys and like really form that interpersonal connection with each of them so i know them on a very personal level um that that's really important to me our like i said our work culture is the whole thing that makes me love my job and i definitely take priority in that it's a you know i think in some in some businesses it seems like there's like a there's just a division between office and field. Uh -huh. they don't feel so that really, that's great. It speaks to how well you, you guys are doing because of that connection that you strove to, to, to create. Uh, uh, absolutely. And that's something that, you know, as we grow my customer service department, um, that's something that I'm impressing on them as well, like to formulate those connections and those bonds with the technicians, because that's so important. Because I do know, you know, I, I don't, obviously have a lot of experience in the HVAC industry. So I don't really have a lot of comparison, but I hear from my technicians, you know, obviously they have experience working with other people right. um, and, and other companies. And I, I really think that that is something that does set us apart is the fact that our office works so hand in hand with our technicians, because ultimately we're the pilot of the plane. Yep. We set them up for the success. It's not, we're not just the first impression on the phone for our customers. Right. Yeah, I was going to say any any consultant, any coach that goes to uh, a one of our, our companies to go evaluate them, the first place they go is call center. Yes, <laughs> it's what starts everything, right? Yeah, that's not right. Nothing else is right. Um, let's talk a little bit more of the art of, of call taking, and because you know that's where we began learning that part. As well, we'll get into dispatching a little bit more uh, later. So, how long did it to take you to kind of make the script your own? So um, our call script has, like, like I said, we've always dispatched for profits. So my operations manager was very like st structured in my calls taking call taking script, um, and I really didn't have to do very much to tweak it to be mine because I really wanted to make sure that I was covering all the base points. Um, I think the most important thing is is to understand that script. But what I think made me tweak it the most was understanding my workflow yeah. behind the software that we're using. So that way the call script is natural sounding with the call booking, um, especially since, you know, we were a department of Uno. <laughs> so I had to be as efficient as possible through the phone. So be, being confident in that call taking script and having it master and match my workflow to book the call so I could be, all right, cool, perfect. Well, we'll see you then. Click and then ring, ring, ring again. What? <laughs> do you have any kind of, like, for example, I use cheat sheets. Uh, do you have any kind of like a cheat sheet or especially early on, they'll fix a bullet point, the process? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have um, a little cheat sheet even now to this day. I still utilize it all the time of um, our membership benefits just to kind of have run through points. Yeah. 
Um, and then I also have uh, bullet points for uh, the different services that are included in our tune-up, like what all of those into it. So that way I can really build the value for the customers that really are requiring that. Yeah, very good. Do you, okay, this might be corny, but I'm going to ask. Do you have like a mirror or anything to check your style? Or are you just good? You seem pretty naturally positive. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I got half. Yeah, no, I don't have a mirror. Um, although, although there are mirrors in my office, like on the back wall, so like yeah. I can still see myself smiling. But I mean, from the background that I came from, I was very customer facing, so smiling is kind of a natural thing for me. I kind of I don't know how to talk without smiling. I, was gonna say, I think that's so that. I only get speech to your previous experience. I think that's a yeah. gadget. So we, <laughs> no, I figured. But I wanted to answer. Yeah. Um. Now, when you answer the phone, do you have a certain way you answer? Of course I do. <laughs> Monet boys may um, mimic me all the time. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you for calling Air Repair. This is Amanda speaking. How can I assist you today? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and what's your response you get from people? I mean, because you're, you're so upbeat, you say. Oh, yeah. And uh, it varies. So I either will disarm people or catch them off guard, and they'll be like, oh. <laughs> and I get a lot of the time, is this a live representative? Right. <laughs> and then I get, oh, well, you aren't, aren't you just cheerful and pleasant? Hi, how are you? And, and I, my favorite is when my, my long-term customers call in, they know to expect that. Yeah. And so then they go, oh, hi, Amanda speaking. This is Mr. Jones. <laughs> la, 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 la. And, and they kind of make it back to me. Yeah. That's so funny. That's, that's really good. That's great. Now, what are, what are some of the, the questions you ask really early on to get as much information as possible about you know the homeowners and the project and all yeah absolutely um so questions are key obviously to any type of priority that we're listing for call booking um uh, first and foremost i want to know the year their issue yeah. um because their issue will determine kind of the whole rest of my script from there yeah. um but um, I always, once they kind of identify an issue, you know, sometimes customers will call in and they'll lead with that, like, hey, I have a problem. But then sometimes you got to dig it out a little bit. Um, but I always make sure to follow that with empathy first. Um, I'm so sorry you're experiencing that issue. You called the right place. We want to help you. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I figure out what city they're located in and um, how many systems that they have and then uh, how old the equipment is. Sure. Um, because that's going to be the first major three points that will determine technician and time frame that I offer them. Right. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And how about, I'm sure people just, some people just naturally offer up information like, oh, it's my birthday today and I didn't feel like, yeah. you know, have to deal with it. Did you notate that as well, those little personal Yes. Yeah, so um, one of the uh, things that I, I believe sets us apart as a company uh, is that we've been family owned and operated for the last 25 years. So what we really preach is we're a part of the air, you're part of the air repair family when you join our comfort club membership. So if they, you know, say anything like that, birthdays or um, anything special information like that, I do notate that on the account. Um, but a lot of the times um, I'll also be notating what they do for work, like based off their scheduling, like if they work nights, if they're a teacher. So that way I know when the best times are to call them and I know when the when their, you know, most preferred time frames to be scheduled for are. Sure. Um, the other thing I like to notate on there is any landlord tenant situations, any special relationship for point of contact. We have a lot of elderly people that live in our area. So there are a lot of um, you know, sons and daughters that are calling on behalf of their parents uh, to schedule their appointments. Um, we also have a lot of Airbnb locations because we're over in cowboy country. So, um, and uh, the other thing I like to notate on the account is um, if I have any cancellations or reschedules for any particular reason, I'll like to notate that. Like if the wife ha is in the hospital or they tested positive for COVID or something like that. So I can be like, oh, I hope everything went well for your wife's surgery. And like, really formulate that relationship and, and make that fam familial tie so that way they really do feel like they are part of our repair family. Sure, for sure. So when how is that information conveyed to the technicians? Is it all through software or do you, or is it a verbal thing you, when you when you dispatch them, will you verbally just call them and then let them know what that's called? Uh, no, so we actually, we utilize uh, Service Titan. So all of our dispatching is done through Service Titan. Yeah. Our technicians have their schedule for the day um, currently. Uh, they can view all their calls for the day, and um, there are technician-facing notes. So that's where I'll be putting all that information in there. I also do make sure that it's notated in the profile as well for any, like, special circumstance type stuff, like their scheduling preferences and their jobs and that kind of stuff in the actual profile. So we have that on file for them. Yeah. 
Um, so that way, whenever we call to do club maintenances or anything like that in the future. If uh, now, so they're automatically then dispatched the next shop. Mm -hmm. Next, is there some kind of uh, a fail safe if they forget to enter certain information? Are you notified or how to, how does that work? Or is that something you have to follow behind and go, hey, you forgot to, to do X, Y, Z? Yeah. Um, so uh, my CCR uh, that I have, she does happy calls and we have a little happy call for yep. form and that's where all of that kind of loose end stuff is all tied up. Great. You guys still do the happy call. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. And we have a little form that we go through that is attached to that job. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just makes sure that there are no pending items left on the invoice, whether they were collected for or not, um, whether they were converted at that job or not, because then that gives my CCR another opportunity to try to get them onto our family. Sure, sure, for sure. Now, say, uh, someone calls for, for you know, do they have a repair, no, no heat or no cooling. And uh, do you like to, to talk about the service fee after you give appointment options? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I, a lot of times... The, the customers, when they call in, they're pretty sure there's going to be a service fee. So I don't even like, I just like to kind of gloss over that and just use that as setting the expectation for the appointment. Um, now, obviously, during slower season, we do have the opportunity to waive that dispatch fee um, for first time customers. But I always like to set the expectation like, sure, we're doing it because, you know, you're, you know, trying us out for the first time. And we absolutely want to make sure you have the best experience. But just so you know that there may be an advanced diagnostic if the technician, you know, has to do more than a preliminary search through his findings. Sure. I guess how many options you always get more call? Uh, two to three. That is it. Too many options gets them too confused. <laughs> yep. right. Right. Very, good. <laughs> Very good. And then how uh, how do you prioritize those calls? Then it based on obviously no no beat, no cool, age of age of the equipment. Oh, yeah. So um, it'll be primarily, you know, whether it's no heat, no cool water leaks. Those are ones that are immediate attention. Um, but then we go based off a of priority for age of equipment, because obviously the older the equipment is, the better of an opportunity that there is to sell something there. Um, and then, you know, as we, you know, go down further, any airflow estimates, those are kind of lower priority club member club visits. Those are lower priority, especially ones that aren't experiencing issues. Um, but we always make sure when we're calling our club members to schedule those club visits, we ask at every single scheduling call whether or not, and this is whether it's over phone call or text or email, are you experiencing any issues with your systems at this time? Do you need the technician to bring any filters for an additional charge? Mm. We always make sure that that's set up first because if they are experiencing issues, that's no longer a low priority call. That could switch to a demand. Right. That makes sense. Very good. When you do have to, to communicate the service fee, how do you kind of explain the value of it so it's not just a, something you have to pay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that sends a, I mean, I'll say it exactly for my call script. Um, so the dispatch, uh, the trip charge will be a $67 fee, and that allows a licensed and, and uh, background checked technician to come out to your home and take a preliminary look over the equipment. Uh, that will allow him to uh, provide you with his recommendations as far as any further diagnostics, if any are required to investigate that issue further, or he'll provide you with op options for the repair or replacement of parts or equipment. Very good. Now, how do you how do you know those people? Can you just give me a ballpark price and how much this repair is going to cost? Yes, that's a great question because I do get that, but uh, all the time. Uh, but I. Uh, well, I have made it very clear that to my CCR team that we are not to give prices. That is not our job. Our job is to book the service call. I always say, I don't have access to that kind of pricing, and we really need to have a licensed technician come out to diagnose the issue to make sure that they're giving you the most accurate pricing. Because one of our core values is integrity, and I would hate for me to give a ballpark price and then us go out there and it ends up being twice as much. That's not integrity. So, and we want to make sure that they're having the best experience and that's going to create a not very great experience if they're told one thing and then we get out there and it's a total other. <laughs> For sure. How do you get those people like, why do I have to pay a service? Or you said just people are used to it now, but you got to handle that every once in a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. I do have to handle it every once in a while. Um, there are so certain people that just don't want to and, and, you know, for, like I said, for first time customers, sure. I will absolutely waive it. That is not a problem sure. whatsoever to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like we do offer free replacement estimates. So that, that is always helpful too. Um, but as far as, um, any other customers that just are really adamant about not paying a dispatch fee, they're just not our customer and that's okay with me. 
<laughs> because if they don't want to pay the service fee, they're not going to really enjoy our prices. <laughs> I mean, those people like, oh, can't you guys just get out a little sooner? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we we treat you know all of our customers with a higher sense of urgency. You know, we want to make sure that we're getting everybody seen in a timely fashion. And um, I, I think one of the big questions to consider whenever you're booking service calls. Um, is something that I like to ask, especially when we're in peak season, when the phones literally will not stop ringing, is how long has this issue been going on? Because then that will determine what an emergency to you it is. Because if it's been going on for two, three weeks, then it, we, if you, we have to get you next day or the day after, then that should be okay. Um, so it kind of gives me less of a guilt trip <laughs> when I'm booking the call. Sure. sure. Yeah. How do you handle, I mean, I'm, I know you guys do great, but we're, but we're all people and, and little things happen. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Someone that calls in that's upset for maybe they, they, they can't figure out how to work the new thermostat. I'm sure yeah. Comes in. So how do you kind of diffuse them and get them calmed down? And then, but then how do you handle that call? Yeah, well, um, so it honestly, it depends on, you know, whether or not they're a club member or not. Because part of our perks is that if they call in with a demand service call, they get seen within 24 hours. So um, that's a perk. And if they're not a member, that gives us the opportunity to plant the seed and uh, sell the membership. But, you know, if if they're a, a new customer, you know, we totally understand um, the frustration that they are experiencing and we want to get them taken care of as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, the, we, you know, uh, obviously will offer the next available time slot that I have. And if that's just not soon enough for them, I always I, I will go on to. I, I go above and beyond. I'll go on YouTube and I'll find their thermostat. <laughs> I'll send them a little YouTube tutorial video on it. Sure. I'm like, maybe that'll help or, you know, something like that. And then we can come back out there and check it out still at this time frame that I have available for you. And we'll, we'll have a licensed technician come take a look at it if it's not something that you can troubleshoot. How about a callback, like an install that, that there's just some kind of, maybe it's a bad piece of equipment that's yeah. not... It's not anyone's fault. It's just the equipment. So how do you handle that irritated customer in those situations? I always want to reserve them a space to be able to validate and express their frustration because that is very frustrating. And, you know, we want to make sure that anything that we install, um, that we we stand behind our work, period, at the end of the day. Um, so we'll move lower priority calls to accommodate that. We'll stack it just so sure. that way we can get them taken care of because that that's the arena's stuff to me right yeah. there. <laughs> well, the and, yeah. and we want to make sure that that customer feels like they invested their money with the right people. Support for this podcast comes from Insincorator. Insincorator is the world leader in food waste disposers and hot water dispensers and holds over 400 patents on fine grinding and quiet technology innovations. Based and assembled here in the United States, Insincorator produces the popular Badger series and can offer many upgraded disposers, such as the Pro Series built for plumbers and builders to meet the needs of the more demanding customer. The hot water category has grown nicely in the past three years as homeowners desire more out of their homes, such as preparing meals and hot beverages. We are now the vision of the Whirlpool Corporation. Visit Insincorator.com to learn more. So um, let's talk about, okay, someone's picked an appointment time. They're ready to go. How do you transition from that and the service fee to talking about your club membership? Yeah, so um, honestly, you know, every customer values something different. So it just kind of depends on... Uh, there's not kind of a one size fits all. We we slip it in where we find their values lie. So their values will lie at either credibility. Uh, did I pick the right place? Are they experienced enough to take care of me? Um, their value can lie in the agenda. What do I expect? How do I know what to do? I don't know anything. Uh, or their their value will lie in price. And so it, depending on where they kind of fall on that spectrum is depending on how we kind of insert our little nuggets for the club membership. So we'll use certain perks for certain things. So like my credibility driven customers, we go off of our warranties or extended warranty perks that we have as part of our club membership. Uh, for my agenda customers, we talk about priority booking uh, and then for my price-driven customers, we go off of the 20% off discount of savings that you get as being a part of our team. 
and decide what kind of customer you have in two minutes. It totally depends on the conversation, the questions. It's it's honestly just experience and getting to ask the right questions. Because yeah. once you ask the right questions and you hear what their kind of their feedback is to your questioning, that kind of leads you to be like, oh, okay. Like especially if they're asking about service fee, they're probably more likely a price driven customer. Sure. If they're asking about like, oh, hey, you know, my friend referred me because, you know, I've been, you know, duped in the past by a previous company. That's a credibility customer right there. And then, you know, for the customers that are just like, I really just don't have any idea what, what, what to expect or what's going on like this. I'm a first time homeowner. That's an agenda customer. So yeah. and and it's asking those questions in the right way and being able to go off of their feedback and answer with intent to understand and to clarify um, that will make all that difference. So you'll lead with the benefit that speaks to them, but I'm sure you yeah. swerve in the hall. Oh yeah, <laughs> once I got them on the hook, it is hook, line, and sinker. That's when I'm like, oh, our membership, you're interested, do you say? Oh, great, well, this is everything that's included and we offer it at these prices. Which option works best for you? Okay, you have, you have a couple different memberships. So we offer, uh, we offer the, it, it's the same collective membership, but we offer it at a monthly basis for an annual basis. So it's kind of whatever fits their budget. Um, and that's kind of what we, how we approach that. What, is there a certain one that people tend to drift towards? Uh, we are incentivizing our monthly memberships uh, because with our extended warranties, it's much easier for them to be on an auto renewal of a smaller amount uh, than it is for the annual. Um, and, you know, we definitely want our our Comfort Club members to be able to have those extended warranties and have that perk be really maximized for them. Sure. Yeah. What are, I, I mean, I'm not sure, I mean, you, you did a great job, but I'm sure not everyone goes, absolutely. In the, let's find me up the way. <laughs> so, uh, so what do you, yeah. how do you handle someone's like, no, really, no, I mean, how much do you push? Because you don't want to. No, I don't want to push too much. So like, you know, if they're, if they're already kind of grabbing on the hook, I'm like, cool, then let's talk about it. Let's have a candid open conversation about it. I want you to join our family before we even get out there. And if you trust us enough from just my phone call conversation, awesome. But if not, that's okay. You want to test us out? Let me, let me show you what we're about. Let me show you why you should by sending my expert out there to come and take care of you. And then I always, you know, end the conversation with, if I didn't get them over the phone, like, you know, I'm gonna notate it in here that we had this conversation today and you know, your technician, so-and-so will be out there and they'll be able to sign you up if that's something that you choose to move forward with if you enjoy your service with them. Sure, sure. So you don't you don't push hard, you just plant the seed. There. Absolutely. Very, yep. very, very good. Okay. All right, so you know, you you politely say, hey, have a great day, we'll, we'll be out there soon. Uh, what do you do when someone say calls back because you said oh, I can only get there we can get to your house in two days and they come to the calls back and they say they want to cancel because you know Joe Schmo said they can get there you know today yeah so how do you handle it situation? I mean honestly it just really depends on the priority of their call and kind of what my schedule looks like because the, I do keep you know a cancellation list of of phone numbers that I think are really good leads that if they do call back, I'm like, cool. Or if I have a cancellation pop up, I'll be like, Hey, by the way, just so you know, I had a cancellation pop up in between four and six today. You want, do you, uh, do you still want me to go ahead and get you booked? Um, but, uh, you know, it, it honestly just really depends on the nature of the situation that they're experiencing. Sometimes that happens. And if we can't get to it, then we just can't get to it. You know, it is what it is, but you know, uh, nine times out of 10, I'll always utilize that to be like, oh, okay, we'll just keep our number in the future because we love the opportunity to earn your business. But we always, you know, accept that little small defeat with grace uh, because that will, that might be the different setter of when, you know, if they fail to show up, you know, that competitor that they move forward with fails to show up, they'll be like, oh, that nice girl on the phone. <laughs> Funny. Uh, you came in very well prepared today with a list of your numbers and such. So oh, yeah. I have an idea that you probably keep a close eye on your KPIs, right? Absolutely. Especially in the in charge of the department. Uh -huh. what, what KPIs are you really focusing on uh, in terms of, you know, what's coming into the, the call center? Yeah. Um, so the KPIs that, you know, I focus on for my department are call booking and cancellation rate. Um, uh, but those aren't the only KPIs that I pay attention to. And that's not the only KPIs that I make my department pay attention to either. Okay. Um, especially being that I dispatch as well. Um, it's, and to be able to dispatch for profits effectively, you really need to understand where your techs are and what their KPIs look like as well. 
because, you know, sales is very cyclical. So you're going to have some technicians that are absolutely on fire, killing it. They right. can all gas, no brakes, yeah. you know, kind of moments. And then you're going to have some technicians that are just struggling a little bit. And we just need to kind of push them a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's all a cycle and it all circles back around and everybody gets their turn. Um, but, you know, paying attention to that to be able to maximize the calls that do come in and, you know, kind of place those opportunities with the right people at the right time. Yeah. Those KPIs are important as well. How do you nurture those technicians that are struggling? <laughs> How many, uh, you know, just service fee only calls before you go? And maybe you need to add the rest of the day yeah. to collect yourself. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'm really big on rewards and recognition. So we celebrate any win. Any estimate that gets sold, I'm, I'm always in in our little group chats, you know, amping them up with a cute little gif or, you know, yay, it's so good. I'm, yeah. Or, and then, you know, at the end of the day, if they swing by the office, I'll pull them to the side and I'll be like, you did really great today. Like, get keep the momentum going. Like, how, foster that interpersonally and be able to be told to their face like you're doing great like keep going keep going you'll get out of this slump it is okay <laughs> being their little cheerleader that's right that's right i like it um now do just technicians just sell looking there should he have like comfort buys your sales people yeah so um all of my technicians are service to sales okay. every single one of them all right so yeah. very good so that 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 is that makes it easier so uh, yeah. you have this but, so you got to learn those personalities and their strong suits. That, that's exactly why it's so important. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Um, let's talk about, you know, uh, how you handle when the phones do slow down. So maybe it's uh, the spring or something. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do to try and stimulate some calls? Yeah. So um, we uh, have a lead software that we utilize called Hatch um, where it kind of formulates all of our leads into one central location where we're able to reach out to all of those um, as they come in, which is really awesome. Um, and then um, obviously the slower shoulder seasons, we get through with our members. That's how we feed our guys. We maintenance is and going and maximizing those opportunities. You know, during the summer, we primarily focus on getting people up and cooling. And then during the fall winter visits, that's when we're focusing on things like airflow accessories that may not have been touched on to get them up and cooling. So we, we really make sure to focus on that during um, the fall winter time. And we make sure to set those expectations in the summer with our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, you know, when we come back out for maintenance, we're going to check on your airflow, make sure that everything is running smoothly. Um, and uh, you know, that that's definitely something that we focus on is getting all of our members. Uh, we, we have quite a few of them. So making sure that they're all being outreached to uh, by phone, email and text and to do so repeatedly because obviously the fall and winter times when when we're slower we're that's also the holiday times where things come up and vacations and life happens and people just forget to respond to that text or that email or they miss that phone call so being sure to be really consistent in our practice and approach about getting them scheduled and expressing that importance of them getting their maintenance to maintain their parts warranties is absolutely critical. Oh, no, sure, for sure. Yeah. Is that what you lead with? Hey, this is critical for your warranty that, that this is done. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it's actually uh, listed in our extended warranty offerings that we have with yeah. our Comfort Club membership too. You have to be a Comfort Club member and maintain that membership and main and get your maintenance. It's important. It's crucial. Sure. What else? What other benefits? Are there other benefits you you're sure to mention in those calls, like in terms of how the efficiency or anything like that, or you just really make focus on the the imports to keep the board? Yeah. Um. I mean, we. I use that. I push that a lot because uh, that to me is really an awesome deal that we offer uh, our customers that option. Um, but we also do waived uh, dispatching fees with same day repairs, um, the discounts, they get it on uh, accessories and upgrades as well. So I'll push that at times too. Um, and uh, they also get guaranteed 24 hour priority booking um with that uh so during the summertime or when we have snow snowpocalypses <laughs> in texas so that is super beneficial to them they yeah. love they love that perk as well sure how much uh outbound are you cal call are you doing to non-club members maybe some tune-ups if you have system yeah 
Um, so we do that, especially when the phones are very, very slow. Um, and we generate lists from people that we didn't convert. Um, we also have a lot of outreach for renewal opportunities, people that their auto renew didn't go through or we haven't heard from them in a while and it's been a while since our last visit with us so we have different little outreach lists that we work from Oof. periodically throughout the slow season because if the phones aren't ringing we all be smiling and dialing baby right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, are those tune-ups free or are they discount they are discounted yeah we do um uh, tune-up specials mm -hmm. so uh, that allows us to get our foot back in the door right and also, you you said you do some uh, before we hit record. You do some selling as well. Some oh yeah, products, right? <laughs> IQ and stuff like that. Yeah, so tell people about you know they have customers actually calling in and, and inquiring about that. Yeah, so um, that's uh, some of the outreach that we do with our marketing campaigns is about uh, indoor air quality and uh, duct cleaning and things of that nature. Um, and we have a lot of customers that actually call in asking about those services. They're asking questions about our indoor air quality. They're asking, how often am I supposed to get my ducts cleaned? And, you know, I just installed this new system, but I don't think that's ever been done. And my house is 30 years old. And I'm like, oh, perfect. Well, how, you know, that gives me the opportunity to go ahead and, you know, nurture that lead and utilize it and create revenue as a non-producer so now the non-producer just became a break-even girl right <laughs> <laughs> but you you share with me here's some critical questions you have to yes have systems you have could kind of share with everyone your whole process yeah so uh for uh duck cleanings um the third party uh, contractor that we use for our duct cleaning services, um, we charge by the number of systems. So a lot of the times, some customers may not be aware of how many systems there are. So I'll always be like, oh, how many units do you see outside? Um, and that'll tell me how many systems that they have. And then I'll be able to take down all their contact information, build them an estimate in Service Titan, send that over to them. Uh, and I also go through you know, the process. Um, I have a really close relationship with our duct cleaning team. Uh, and our installation team and I, I've, you know, personally asked it to be educated on those services, how they go about it, what to set the expectations for for the customer, how that process works, what it looks like from start to finish. So I can really educate the customer on what services they'll actually be investing in and why it's important for them to do it. Because you have to believe in a service to be able to sell it. Sure, for sure. How do you handle those, um, you know, those those estimates that were not sold? Maybe with someone's like, I just really need to think about it. Because your technicians are selling, they're busy running what the next call, <laughs> the next call. It's, it's I'm sure it's difficult for them to keep that in order. So how is that man? Oh, that is managed all with my a repair Bible. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my bread and butter to being successful yeah. in my job. Um, it's a planner. Um, I actually uh, make it every single week. And in it, oh my goodness, it is split up by day. And uh, so I have little daily reminders of everything that needs to go on. I have my little daily tasks that I do every single day. And then on Friday, I have this lovely follow ups page of all the duck cleanings that need to be rescheduled or club visits that need to be rescheduled or, um, you know, estimates that need to be followed up with back ordered parts, uh, when those are expected to arrive, um, and any like special circumstance type customers, uh, that come in that they're like, you know, things aren't going to be good until, you know, after tax season. So I have like a whole yearly log in the front with like specific dates for spread out further into the future. So that way I know when I build my next month, I'm like, okay, cool. So we got to follow up because, you know, uh, Jack Mooney needs to renew in April. So I got to call him and make sure that we get him taken care of and those kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> you said daily tasks. So I have to ask for people to be intrigued because uh, there's a lot of smaller companies that have people like you. What are some of those daily tasks you always have? So my daily tasks are um, the uh, Google ch chat threads. Uh, we do those. Uh, that's our our lifeblood of how we communicate with each other um, and all the department heads that are responsible for those uh, different chats are in there. Um, so making sure I'm staying current on those and anything that needs to be added to the Bible gets done. So um, I go through my email. I mean, that's a all day task um periodically throughout the day um and then i go through our text messages for um our customer you know based chat uh how we text out and text in 
Um, and then I also make sure to follow up on any hatch leads or anything like that. Um, and then uh, I also work on uh, failed credit cards uh, for any memberships that the charge card didn't go through. Sure. So we got to take care of that. Um, we schedule quality control inspections complimentary as part of our installation process. So that gets followed up with on that, um, as well as um, Wells Fargo authorization invoices. Those need to get sent out and made sure that they're being signed so that way we can actually, you know, get paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of important. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, talked about what you do when things are sold. How about when you are just absolutely slammed? It's 107 in Frisco, Texas, and uh, everybody wants your help now. So how do we manage it? Um, so honestly, um, you eat the elephant one bite at a time, and that's exactly how it goes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously um, the, there is a hierarchy for making sure that we're prioritizing the right calls and making sure that we're getting the people that are the right customers for us and, and making sure that we're taking care of everyone with the sense of urgency that they feel is adequate. Um, that's always kind of a challenge being able to juggle that around, but, you know, never be scared to, you know, have to give a homeowner a call to reschedule them. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes that's just how it happens. And, you know, you have to manage it in such a way to where your business is successful, because if you stack a technician too much, and they don't get to it and they don't meet those expectations, you're not giving your best service. So, you know, being able to have just that candid conversation of being able to assess everything in real time exactly as it is to set your technician up for success and the customer up for success too. It's a, a, a teeter-totter that you delicately balance right. throughout the day. So what do you do with those those homeowners that are like, I had this appointment booked for a couple of days and it's just a tune-up or something yeah it's, it's blazing hot Ted, but you've got you know obviously people that are without air conditioning completely it's a safety issue but what do you do with the customer that is irritated is there any way to smooth that over oh yeah you know um i just i like to approach my customers with honesty like because if you're just honest and open with them they are more than likely it, willing to hear you out and be willing to push and I, I like you know when it's really hot or like when snowpocalypse happened you know we get those every once in a while in texas um but you know when those things happen i was like you know we we have you know customers that are calling in that they're without heat would you please mind if we just get you rescheduled to next week you know when the weather warms up we just want to make sure that we're taking care of everybody and getting everybody you know up and heating or you know get get people cool air you know if you really like pull at their heartstrings a little bit you can kind of finagle them to reschedule a little bit and a little butt push <laughs> gentle push gentle. with lots of sweet disney princess words there you go now i guess we we waive a service fee or something like that. oh absolutely yeah. if need be absolutely uh but nine times out of ten you know customers they they understand that we're all human beings and they want to do the right thing for other human beings so sometimes you don't have to but i will offer it absolutely if that's going to make all the difference in the world sure yeah now if i'm not mistaken your roles expanded even more you become yeah. officially a man Yes, I have. How long? When did that happen? Uh, that happened uh, about eight months ago. Okay. So yeah. You know. So it's been a little while, um, but it has been a journey because I am still primary while I'm training. Um, obviously, my little underling. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> um, she's doing great, um, but uh, she's still a baby in the C CCR world for me. Um, and uh, so she's still learning. She's... Um, so she's not ready to be primary yet. She will be eventually. We're we're working towards it. But I think the importance there is making sure that you're setting up your CCRs for success as well. You don't want to dump all of their responsibilities on them at once. You kind of want to just like kind of feed them little things at a time and wait for them to really master that craft and that skill set before they move on to the next thing. Um, and and to be able to have that close knit you know, department, I make sure to always be following up with Marcy about, you know, what what do you need? Where are you at? Like, what all do you have left? So that way I kind of can gauge where she's at for her pace um, and, and really understand how much more I can I can give her. Yeah. Was her onboarding similar to uh, yours? Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it made me a master of my art. So uh, I figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Of course, our team has grown a lot. So, um, I mean, we grew 32% this past year. So, um, and our team size doubled. So that'll be interesting this summer uh, at being being us two and managing a, a whole crew this go round. Um, but, you know, I think figuring out how to manage that growth is has become key. And, and I'm already starting to identify now that this will be my third summer. It's be my third summer. So <laughs> sign of, um, but I think, you know, every season that we have, I always have key takeaways for like how I can improve next time. Okay. Um, and, and I always kind of review those notes and look back over it. And I've been using them to kind of prep and process things before we get busy. Like, okay, you know, if, if, if this is already a problem now, when the phones are ringing off the hook, like this is, you know, this is something that we need to prep for and we need to plan for and kind of have processes already in place. So like uh, the happy call form, that's new. That was a new process that we put into place um, for when things get really busy. So we have a methodical approach to every single thing that we do for every single job to make sure that all the check boxes are getting done. Sure. Any, anything, any other little tidbits that you learned? We, we need to get this under the full matter. <laughs> Yeah, um, so uh, especially for like warranty calls and uh, our quality control inspections, uh, they're done by the same senior techs. So um, being able to, you know, make sure that we're allotting, you know, enough time and being able to spread out. So like right now, we're having all of our techs have a ride along day with our QC guys. So that way the selling techs can start doing their own um, quality control inspections when season starts and we're we're selling multiple systems a day because it's only going to be, you know, one of them. <laughs> How much time are you going to allow for your senior tech to, to do a quality control inspection? Uh, we allow uh, them about an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, very good. That way they can be really thorough. Okay, that's great. Uh, he said more seat. My my CCR my little minion right yes. so what the, what kind of uh, ongoing training are you doing with her I know you see you touch base you talk with her but is there like okay we're gonna sit down every morning to talk about maybe listen to calls or what what, what is there a, a certain process you follow Yeah so um, we do one on ones uh, once a month for sure uh, where we just kind of overview um, kind of several of the calls. Uh, kind of analyze that. I think it's so important for you to have your CCR listen to their calls, listen to their own personal calls, not your calls, theirs. Yeah. Because it, it's something about self-awareness that it brings to you. Uh, I remember when uh, my operations manager made me listen to my own calls. Um, one of the things I did was I had a lot of pauses and I didn't realize how long those pauses were until I listened to my own calls and I was like, wow, two minutes. Oh, that's a lot of dead space, man. Where's the cricket? You know, is, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, wow, I didn't realize that I did that. And that customer just sat there and was like, whoa. And, but I learned from there, I was like, oh, oh, we got to keep that. We need to revise my call flow. We need to revise. Is it just doing data entry? And that's why it was far. Yeah. Or looking at the schedule, not knowing my next available timeframes. And so that's what made me start to build confidence in that and like be aware that I needed to have those I ideas in mind before I answered the phone of like what my next availability is, always looking forward at the schedule, making sure that I, you know, if, if I have an issue where like, I'm having technical difficulties or something, placing them on hold. Like, don't let them sit there in dead space. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that's something that, you know, you, you don't think about when you're on the phone because to you it doesn't seem like a long time at all. But, right. yeah, oh, yeah, I'm processing something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, Kind of been wrapping up. Man, yeah. Why do you think you've been so successful so quickly? Because I know two years seems maybe like a long time. It's really. Yeah, no, it's really not. Um, I genuinely believe that my work family, I mean, they really keep me going. I love every single one of them to death. I mean, just to pieces, I do. And I, I want to be the best for the best. And I, there is nobody else I would rather work for. I mean, they are honestly just the cream of the crop. 
both personally and professionally and I'm lucky enough to work there like I thank my lucky stars every single day I walk into my office <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great uh last question is um you know maybe it's here this weekend at DC or or I don't know if you're you're talking to any newer CCR um what advice might you give him or her on how to do really well in this in this industry Absolutely. That is a great question. Get a planner. <laughs> Get a planner and use it. Like if you are not a planner type of person, you need to be. Because let me tell you, that has been the only way that we have gotten through managing our growth is because things don't fall through the cracks. As soon as something has risen up, like anything, it immediately goes in my planner immediately. Yeah. And, and that means that, you know, that's there is a lot of times where estimates will get forgotten about or customers' will, opportunities will just fall through the cracks. And that's revenue that you're letting go away because you're not, you know, writing it down and being accountable to it and, you know, having a place for it. Um, I also, you know, would definitely recommend you to get confident in your call scripts and figure out, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing over and over again. Make each call matter to getting better and improving your call flow because the confidence that you have in your call flow could be the difference in between them trusting your company to book with you or not. Mm -hmm. And I've literally had customers who have left reviews and it's so funny. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm just, you know, the girl that schedules the appointments, right? Okay. And then I'll have customers that leave reviews after they get an install that say, the Amanda who booked my call is the whole reason I chose their repair. Wow. And that's cool. You never realize the tone that you set with your customers and you know, you think that they just forget about little old you after you after they hang up the phone. And then you made the difference. You've you made them choose you. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, very cool. So you always make that effort to try and connect with someone you talk to. Absolutely. I, now you you plug a planner, so I have to add. <laughs> how did you get that customized? Did you get that screen printed on there? How did, how did you get that like that? I custom did it myself. Oh, I, really? Yeah, so I'm into it. Oh, very much so. Yeah, it's like my little creative thing. Um, yeah, so I uh, tediously will never get that four hours back, but it's still worth oh, it because God. I committed to the aesthetic. Yeah. I call all of my guys even call it my Bible. So I had to do the little Old Testament type font, like yes. old school font. Yeah. And so I, I really committed and went all the way, all the way through to the end. And all the guys got such a kick out of it when I came back for the new year with it. They were crying. That's great. That's great. <laughs> well, Amanda, thank you so much for your time today. This is really enjoyable. Up is so enjoyable. Thank you so much for having me, Bob. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too. That's Amanda Henritzi, a customer care manager for Air Repair Pros in Frisco, Texas. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. If so, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. The two sec seconds you take to leave a review will help other success-minded contractors like you find us and hopefully get a little bit better, which elevates our entire industry. And please join me for future episodes. This has been The Successful Contractor, powered by Sir. Support for this podcast comes from PulseAm and Customer Lobby. Successful certain path members like you know the value of thinking like a customer. We've got the tools to help you do just that. Enter PulseAm Plus. Combining the power of PulseAm and Customer Lobby to enhance your customer's journey by creating value at every touch point. We've helped hundreds of certain path members like you win and retain more business. PulseM Plus utilizes PulseM's industry-leading reputation management capabilities to help you build out the early stages in your customer's journey and maximize your online reputation through Google reviews. Then PulseM Plus keeps your customers coming back by incorporating Customer Lobby's powerful retention platform using postcards, emails, and text messages to send the right message at the right time to encourage repeat business. And as a certain path member, we'll waive your setup fees. For more information, please visit get.pulseM.me slash PM dash plus dash certain path. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path builds successful home service businesses and has for 23 years. We do it by providing contractors with a proven path to success professional coaching, software solutions, 
and a member community of over 1,000 contractors just like you. Doubling your sales with a 20% net profit and an inspiring company culture is all possible. Let us show you the way. With CertainPath, success is made certain. Visit www.mycertainpath.com for more information.